Tim Campion, the director of The Power of the Dog, has used some of the most simple yet effective directing techniques to explore what Carl Jung would call the shadow. So what is the shadow? The shadow is either an unconscious aspect of the personality that the conscious ego does not identify in itself. In short, the shadow is our unknown side. So how does one go about showing, cinematically, the unknown side? They're just as real as possible. At the beginning of this scene, all of the men enter this restaurant. You'll notice that Phil, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, is already stood at the head of the table. But let's take a look at our first clue that Jane is already putting in place. You'll notice how has Phil been lit in this scene. He's completely in darkness. He's silhouetted by the windows behind him, yet no other character is in such darkness. A not so subtle nod to Carl Jung's shadow, yes? We are unable to see him much like he is unable to see himself. But the real information comes in the exceptions to this rule. Phil seems to only ever be lit properly, bathed in light without his hat on, when he is completely alone. So this combination of him always being shadowed and in darkness around other people, yet lit and somewhat free when he's alone, hints to the audience that he is actually hiding a part of himself from the world. His shadow self, maybe? Think of any time you've watched a horror film, if you've watched a horror film. When the filmmakers have taken the time to obscure the monster, that is quite often when that monster is the most scary because we don't have the information to understand just how dangerous that monster is. <laughs> According to Jung, the shadow in being instinctive and irrational is prone to psychological projection in which a perceived personal inferiority is recognized as a perceived moral deficiency in someone else. Jung writes that if these projections remain hidden, the projection making factor, the shadow, then has a free hand and can realize its objectives if it has one. What that means is if you ignore your inner self for too long, your shadow comes out and makes you a real nasty piece of work. So what does this mean for Phil? Well, we meet him as a slightly older chap, which means he's had plenty of time to ignore his shadow. And as we know from Mr. Carl Jung, the longer you ignore that shadow, the more it manifests in nasty behaviors. And boy, oh boy, does it manifest. Get out, you fat bitch! Shut that down or I will! So years of repressing his shadow has meant that it's turned him into a cruel and overly macho man. Jane spots the writing on the wall and delivers him the perfect antagonist in the form of Peter, a naive idealistic boy who doesn't seem to hide his effeminate demeanor and even seems to have accepted himself within a society that ridicules him. Peter is the exact opposite of Phil, but how has Jane achieved this in the various directing techniques throughout the film? Well, first of all, she's taken Phil's rule of always being in darkness and flipped it on its head for Peter. Peter is always in the light. He's always seen easily, which makes us feel like he's an open book. He's naive, he's innocent, but it also hints that he has completely accepted his shadow self, which we know from Carl Jung is an incredible incredibly healthy way of living if we're able to accept our shadow selves. But she goes one step further than that. If you look at the both characters throughout the film, Phil is always in dark clothing, browns and blacks, whereas Peter always has something on that is white, be it his white shirt or even his massively oversized white hat. Again, this is made to make him feel weaker and more feeble, but 
the color, the choice of color here instinctually lets us know again the same psychological effects as the lighting. It makes Phil seem darker, less knowable, whereas Peter feels like an open book, naive and innocent. This light and dark is such a key, simple yet effective psychological strategy to get us to know the characters, or at least think that we know them. On a side note, it is good to always make your characters visually different. This means the audience won't ever lose track of who is who and where they are in more difficult or complex scenes. So due to the way in which Jane has lit and costumed the characters and many, many other choices, we firmly believe that Phil is the dangerous character and Peter is, well, the soft wallflower. He used to worry I wasn't kind enough, that I was too strong. You? Too strong? got that wrong. Brilliantly, when Peter's final actions are revealed and we realize that he had plotted to kill Phil to protect his mother all along, it's not a shock. When the character is revealed, their true intentions are revealed, it just reframes their past actions and fits perfectly. So when we realize that Peter had always accepted his shadow throughout the film, unlike Phil, his actions seem perfectly reasonable. He just happens to be a very dangerous individual. So what can we learn from Jane Cambion's absolute masterpiece? Well, pairing your characters and story with psychological ideas is a fantastic way to inspire your directing whilst ensuring that your audience gain conscious and subconscious information from every frame.